City, or are people in America? 3.20 a.m. in Jupiter, Florida. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. kind of obliged to be up, aren't they? Seeing as it's the US Air Force. So a lot of people obviously familiar, good morning everybody, uh, a lot of people familiar with uh, what we're looking at here, but for those who are not, this is the uh, F-15E Strike Eagle, which um, is the remainder of the F-15, um, I wouldn't say fleet, but uh, air arm here at uh, RAF Lake and Heath. Named RAF Lake and Heath because it is on Ministry of Defence land. Kind of always been that way, but it's uh, it kind of works well, doesn't it? USAF um, Lake and Heath doesn't quite have the same ring to it, does it? <coughs> but this is um, she's quite loaded up, actually. I have to say, with um, practice bombs and laser guided missiles and all that kind of thing. A couple of drop tanks on her, which um, would indicate that she's on, on a relatively long mission, potentially. Um, however, however, Michael Phil tuning in from God damn it, Texas. Good morning, everybody. Stuart Claxton stuck at Blackwall Tunnel. Oh, no better places to be stuck at. Um, yeah, thanks to um, the, the folks at REF Coningsby Spotters Group, by the way, folks, um, who very um, kindly informed us that apparently this week, um, Weekdays at any time between 08.30 and 17.30. Uh, exercise multiple fast jet aircraft will conduct practice engine failure and recovery operations within five nautical mile radius um, of, the, uh, of Lake and Heath aerodrome, aerodrome. Aircraft may operate at speeds of up to 450 knots indicated airspeed in a rapid descent from 14 fares and feet. So I don't know, this this may be the master of ceremonies going up um, to sort of like oversee operations. We do from time to time. Oh, here we come. Here come the rest of them. Now he will likely or she will likely wait. Watch this shot here, folks. Watch this. Wait for me! <laughs> I just had to feed the cats! Yeah, so thanks to all the folks at RF Coningsby. Good morning, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Uh, lots of people already joining us early morning. Give you a bit of a feeler for early mornings, folks. Uh, just to let you know, next week on Monday, 
Uh, we are planning to be at uh, Luton um, with Captain Chris in the simulator live uh, with me and Captain Chris, Capo Chris O, um, and a few others. Tony Rivers, good morning. Acorn Revival. Dionysus, Dionysus, Dionysus. Good morning to you, Alan Brook. Uh, Oz Lady, good day. Um, tuning in from, uh, you know, uh, to Australia. Uh, Tracy Cridland. Just getting dark in South Australia, blimey. First time on the 350 Sunday, Sam Robson. What a lovely aircraft. Virgin Atlantic, favourite so far. Don't surprise me. Rab. Charlie Redpath. Good morning. Uh, Bootle Lad, Andy Pete, Anita L, Odette, Mike Day, Mart Roberts, uh, Brian Stewart, F15. First flew almost 51 years ago. Yeah, it's an crazy, incredibly um, uh, successful platform, isn't it? Obviously being phased out by the F35s in time, but. What an incredible platform this thing is. Weapon systems operator sitting in the back, the Wizzo. Now these uh, ground crews will come out and uh, make final checks. Remove all the pins um, and uh, double check all, uh, everything's secure and as it should be. You might see a, uh, a little full and free movement check with all the flight surfaces. Of course, no, uh, it's not a canard design, the F-15. Kind of traditional, but uh, a robust aircraft all the same. Obviously, it's um, the E and the C. Is it, there's, there's tiny little things that you can notice if you... Um, if you look at the uh, the side pods, the air intakes of the engines, you'll see there's a bulge either side to the left and the right of the engine, which is uh, uh, apparently additional fuel tanks, um, but that's to be confirmed. Formerly known, this is how long the thing's been uh, in uh, in operation for in terms of its, uh, you know, its history. Formerly McDonnell Douglas, um, then uh, bought out by Boeing or taken over by the Boeing Corporation. Designed in the 1980s for long-range, high-speed interdiction. Uh, I'm just reading that. <laughs> Let's have a little look and see what interdiction means. Air interdiction, uh, AL, also known as deep air support. Interesting, uh, is the use of preventive tactical bombing uh, and strafing by combat aircraft like that. So they'll go in and um, it's going to get noisy, folks. Okay, where's he or she going? That was a quick turnaround, wasn't it, actually? As, are they um, perhaps uh, not happy with that aircraft, I believe? That's not the normal route, I have to be honest. And this is gonna do a, yeah, he's uh Well, thanks for coming. <laughs> okay, well, that's there done. Oh, I've left the bleeding iron on, haven't I? Hold on a minute. <laughs> And then there was one. Get their little step, step ladder. I believe, as far as I know, all the um, personnel here at the base are all uh, US citizens, as far as I'm aware. There are some UK um, citizens, and uh, I think the majority of these uh, of these crews are. Um, Something like this. 
something. Uh, what's that? Something's gone up. There's something going up from Mildenhall. We've got something going up from Mildenhall? Certainly sounds like it. There's something up in the air, that's for sure. Bunker Buster. Of course, this is a twin engine jet as opposed to the 35, which is a single engine jet. Two Pratt & Whitney F100 PW220 after-burning turbofan engines. Oh yeah, something go. Uh... Are they sending jets up from Lake? Uh, from Mildenau. Are they sending jets up? Interesting when you um, when you read up on these uh, on the, on the specifications of these aircraft. What is interesting from what we're used to seeing, obviously, with you know uh, an aircraft that weighs a hell of a lot, uh, they need a lot of thrust to take off. You know, 90, 115, 120, 150 thousand pounds of thrust, depending on the size of the aircraft and engine type, etc. But these, uh, these aircraft, because of the power to weight, I mean, they don't weigh that much. Uh, maximum takeoff weight is around about 81,000 pounds or 36 tonnes, which to some people sounds a lot, but it isn't when you're talking about um, the fact that it's powered by... Um, two 15,000 pounds. Uh, so overall, 30,000 pound dry weight. Uh, around about 24,000 pounds with afterburners. So, um, you know, we're talking 10,000 pounds extra thrust uh, when they open up the afterburners. Oh, interesting. F-15Cs we're hearing at Mildon Hall uh, Monday. Not sure when they were due to depart. Well, it just sounds like they've just gone out. Narrow boy, Georgie. Narrow boat, Georgie boy. Wouldn't it be strange if it arrives at Heathrow? I had to be uh, overhead rejoins and brake like these guys. That would be cool, wouldn't it? That would be cool. <laughs> We're going to see uh, all that kind of stuff today. I hope. We have been uh, we have been to uh, to, to, to Lake and Heath before and been a little bit disappointed by the uh, the showing. Um, for example, by now we might have uh, seven or eight jets lined up there being uh, readied, um, along with uh, F-35s over on this pad here. Um, there is uh, equipment there which would indicate that. Uh, Okay, so Holly uh, Scarf telling us, a member here on Big Jet TV telling us that apparently they were due out on Monday, didn't go, Tuesday, didn't go, Wednesday, due out around about 8 a.m. this morning. So I think that was probably them going out then. In fact, them going out now. You can still hear them. Gillian Sankey, first time watching Lake and Eve. Gillian, a very good morning to you. Sit back and enjoy this, because uh, you're going for the ride of your life. Well, that's if they turn up. Nigel Cox soon. Uh, very funny, Tim. Susan New, Alison Billet. Irish Dublin, Philip Jones, Tony Austin, Nick Gray, good morning. 
DC9 gear down. Wish the F14 was still around. I'm going back some. Philip Thorley. Thank you, Holly. That's got some armory on it, isn't it? Weapons, guiding systems, weather radars. Load it up, man. Load it up. Uh, armaments hanging off of her. <laughs> Set to work. It's got little step ladders, look. Amazing. Philip Williams. Welcome back, Philip. As a first class member, XX Luca XX for life is a new member. Welcome, Luca. John Kemp, love the Tomcat. Is that the F14, the Tomcat? Is the Tomcat the uh, one they display? They still display in the US. It's got the chunkiest undercarriage you've ever seen in your life. Um, I think mainly because it was a carrier-based jet. I don't know, maybe. Uh, Philip. I believe so. I, I'm not sure. I'll need to um, have a word with my new contact at the higher, just in terms of uh, discounts and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we were offering it, weren't we? It was. It was happening, and then, then, then I, I'm not. I'm not quite sure what the status is on that at the moment. We'll have to. We'll have to double check. I could probably do that uh, tomorrow. Uh, Lloyd Bell, I look. The last two RAF Hercules are leaving Bry's Norton this morning. Wow. A bit of history right there.
Philip Jones, I know very little about military planes. Well, let me tell you, Philip, uh, I was kind of uh, in the same boat. And in, in some ways, I'm still learning, massively still learning at the moment in terms of uh, military aircraft. I know more about the historic stuff than I do the modern day stuff, but, you know, done my uh, research, my wiki research on, on these jets and uh, just keep watching Philip listen and learn literally that is uh, what it's all about uh, Scott tuning in from Pennsylvania good morning to you Paul B08 are they on night operations this week do you know uh, no Paul not as far as I'm aware we're uh, I think they were night operations last week or something like that maybe uh, John Walton. Uh, it's nothing we can do about the notifications, folks. That, like I keep saying repeatedly, the best way for you to minimise uh, you not receiving a notification is by putting on your notifications on YouTube, on your app as well. Uh, we sent it out on the app yesterday afternoon um, to say when we were going to be live, when we were expecting to be live. Um, so, you know, we can only go so far as to as to, as to let you know what we're doing. Um, we kind of need to rely on you to sort of like <laughs> check your phone or do something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Anyway, good to see you here, John. Odette Hull, uh, HGC Paul Rosser. Good morning. Nick Gray, Johan Heino. Ashy Fire. Ashy Fire, I think that's right. Beverly George, Jimmy G61. Are we looking at the new variant of the F15E, Jimmy G? Is there a new variant of the 15E? I thought that the 15E was the new variant of the, the replacement of the 16, uh, 15C, if you see what I mean, sorry. Uh, Anne Savage. Lux Faye is a new member, welcome Lux. Lovely to see you here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure those 16, those, those um, 15 C's have gone out of Milton or that's what all that kind of noise is around us but like I said need to be aware that there are going to be some exercises potentially it's not guaranteed but um, hearing that uh, there's going to be some um, dual engine loss um, uh, exercises today uh, within five nautical mile radius of the aerodrome. Oh, okay, there is a new 15E variant uh, in the works, apparently. Um, probably visually, there's not a lot of difference to it. I'd imagine it's probably um, just uh, software and uh, Maybe new um, fly-by-wire um, systems and onboard systems, etc., etc. Uh, the only visible, like I say, notable difference between the C and this E variant is the uh, is the the, the, the bulge, uh, the extra fuel tanks at the side of the engine intakes it's a crazy place to put him but when you think about it, it kind of makes sense with regards to um, center of gravity and uh, all that kind of thing because these are very very unstable aircraft to fly in terms of um, their uh, their stability and they're made that way so that they can uh, act really well in dogfight scenarios
not sure if it's still there, but there's a Mountain Air Force Base F-15E with old 200 engines currently being used by the Bollars. So I may see that today if it's still there. Oh, we'll have to have a look out for that. Thank you for that, Holly. Keep watching the Eagle. Michael Singh. Bootle had nice clean burn on both those engines. Kate Guberg is a new member. Welcome, Kate. Nice to see you here. Uh, welcome all new members. Make sure you, if you want to, don't feel obliged, but uh, if you want to come in, have a chat. Let me know about anything. Uh, inform me. I'm like a sponge. I like to soak up knowledge. Philip Jones, spectacular, Sandy Humby. DC-9 gear down to the F-16 still flying here. No, uh, not operational from here. From time to time you might see um, exercises from other European theatres where uh, the, um, like, like the Italians, for example, they might bring uh, their F-16s in here. Uh, that's if they operate them. I'm just talking hypothetically here, but um, it's... Um, from time to time throughout the year, depending on what exercises they're, they're running, you, uh, you might see uh, other types of aircraft operational here. J-Dams, Gillingham, Gus, uh, J-Dams, yes, the J-Dams. I think that's a, is that uh, one of the missiles, I think. Field, yes, on F 14 gear. Steve Downey, yes, F 14 Tomcat US Navy mainly carrier landings. There we go. It's good when you get it partially right, isn't it? Philip Lowry, no B 52 into here, Philip, unless, like I say, there's uh, exercises. We do from time to time get um, uh, large, large transport aircraft in here, military transport aircraft in here, even 747 freighters uh, carrying uh, specialist equipment. Um, but most of that other stuff will go into the neighbouring satellite um, aerodrome, which is Mildenhall, which as the crow flies, is literally just over the road there. Um, about a 20 minute drive from here. Paul is working tonight right near Lake Was that then, that bollard that just took off, uh, just flown over the house? Uh, yes, Nick, very, uh, very aware of um, Nellis. Up there, uh, right slap bang next to Vegas. Of course, um, we're very fortunate here in the UK that uh, where I'm standing right now is a um, is a an area that's been um, dedicated to the to the uh, spotting community around here, enthusiasts and like. Um, it's an official uh, designated area, and um, in fact, the uh, station commander has been known from time to time to come out here and say hello to a few people, photographers and uh, just general uh, fanatics. Um, both here, RAF Coningsby as well, there's a dedicated spotting area. And they're very relaxed about it uh, up at Coningsby as they are here. Um, 
at RAF Lakenheath. In fact, so much so that both here and at uh, Lakenheath, we've been uh, at Maid Mildenhall. I've been invited airside um, once for the change of command at Mildenhall, and uh, another time to uh, to uh, film live the uh, the morning movements of the. Uh, of the 48th here at uh, Lake and Eve, which was pretty impressive. Uh, you might want to flip back and see that. Uh, RAF, uh, Big Jet TV, RAF Lake and Heath. I'm sure if you type that in to YouTube, you it should bring up uh, those exercises, which are pretty crazy. One of those moments where you're sort of like mobile and you're like, I don't know what to point the camera at because there's so much going on. Narrowboat Georgie boy, two F-15s did a practice diver to Gloucester the other day. Interesting. Sorts of like, you know. Are they walking out to um, receive another one or is this this jet that they're working on there's no more there's no more tags left hanging off, off of her is there usually quite a rushed hustle and bustle of the uh, of the ground teams not today Ben and Amy Bergman, 12.45 here in Los Angeles. Uh, Boot Lab F15EX is a major upgrade. Okay, in terms of what are we talking about? It's, I wouldn't imagine there'd be anything sort of like structural in terms of it. Maybe the use of different materials perhaps, but in terms of its... Um, its design and its overall looks. I can't imagine there'd be a great deal that would change on it, would there? Because when you start doing stuff like that, you're talking about a whole new sort of like uh, setup in terms of manufacturing and assembly and all that kind of thing. Uh, Jonathan Beale. Yes, you can indeed see uh, aircraft departing Mildenhall. Um, normally by now, here we go. So I think they're navigation pods that are uh, slung underneath the engine intakes there. You can see the bulge on the side of the uh, intake there, which is the notable characteristic of the um, E model. Head up system. Gonna wind this thing straight up, I think. Watch the, uh, watch the back of the engines as the nozzles are squeezed. More jets coming out. Watch this.
Here we go. Yes, please. No, thanks. Thank you. Check, check. Check, check. Check, check. Check, check. wrong there. Actually land here in the pods. Low altitude navigation and targeting infrared uh, unit, the lantern, um, which is the pod that's underneath the air intake. I think that's right. The others uh, to the left and the right are the navigation pods, I believe. or worse. Check, 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 check. I think that might, well 15, it's gone from 12 to 15. Just have a What do you want me to do? Rank, ramp it right up or what? Well, it's because I'm not shouting, isn't it? I'm not Heathrow, so I'm not shouting because I'm talking, you know. There's people next to me. I've got to be a little bit respectful towards the people. Some are shouting and bellowing on all the time. Steve. 15 better than what? Five. <laughs> Dean Milner. Um, well, shall I knock it back to 12 then? And you fiddle about with it then. Well, I've, I have touched it. I've, I've stopped scratching. Stop scratching it, it won't heal. Of course it's fine, mate. Turn your hearing aid up! EX payload capacity 29,500 pounds. Uh, so, a higher payload capacity. Um,
two jets coming out there just now. Isn't there? Okay, F-15 EX Eagle 2 is an American all-weather multi-world strike fighter derived. Okay, so the, it's on wiki. It's on. Um, 40th Flight Test Squadron, uh, Northern California. Okay, so I'm seeing an image of it here, which is pretty cool. Um, in, a, in a camo style. Um, again... Uh, I tell you what there may be a very slight difference of is the wingtip design on the uh, EX. Uh, in 2018 the USAF and Boeing discussed uh, the F-15X or Advanced F-15 a proposed single seat variant based on the F-15QA to replace F-16 C and Ds, F-15 C and Ds. Improvements include the AMBER, Advanced Missile and Bomb Ejector Rack uh, system to carry up 22 air-to-air -air missiles, infrared search and track advanced avionics and electronic warfare equipment, AESA radar, and revised structure with a service life of 20,000 hours. Revised structure, so, that, so, so again, it's not so much a visible thing, it's more sort of like structurally and so on and so forth. Um, oh, nice one, mate. Thanks, Skipper. Right, cheers, Bella. Thank you. A uh, single and two seat variants were proposed called F-15CX and F-15EX respectively with identical capabilities. The US Air Force opted for the two seat variant which can be flown by either a single pilot or a pilot and WISO, uh, West Weapons Systems Operator, FONC for complex missions and someday controlling collaborative combat aircraft. Uh, one reason for this decision is that only two seat F-15 models remain in production. US Air Force bought the F-15 EX to maintain fleet size as F-22 production ended. The F-35 was delayed and its F-15s were aging. So uh, a number of reasons why they continued the, uh, the development of the F-15. I mean, let's face it folks, she's a beautiful aircraft, isn't she? And has multi-role capabilities. So uh, if it ain't broke, you know what I mean? And it's got a sodding great big Gatling gun in it as well. Uh, makes a crazy noise. Can't see it um, because there's a there's a there's a cover over it. But um, it is there folks. B. We always mention that about the stepladder, you know, multi-million dollar jet and, um, and a, and a 22 pound 95 set of stepladders from B&Q. It literally is that as well. Um, but there you go, man. There you go. It is what it is. But funny enough, when I take the uh, when I take the um, uh, the railings off the off the truck here. Uh, I kind of have a, a cheap set of step ladders that I use to access the bottom bolts. Oh, there is two of them there. He was hit.
kept the burners lit this time. Oh, there's a tanker going up from Belden, all I just spotted. Off to my right. that uh richard well, i don't know where he got that from but uh whether that's a uh you hear that jelly <laughs> jamie reed oh thank you jamie chris pip i thought the raptor was to replace the f Jones. Retired mates. Got to go to breakfast with retired mates. <laughs> Sounds interesting. Obviously a regular meet down the calf. Sounds great, mate. Retired mates. My neighbour's just retired. Lucky son. Uh, Rab H, amazing how the F-35s are noisier with a single engine. Yeah, it's just a big old burner out the back there, isn't it? You know, in terms of its uh, the diameter of the uh, the back end of the uh, F-35's engine. Uh, Rachel Van Zeller appeared on ADSB Exchange. KC-135, thank you, uh, Rachel. Uh, Steve Jeff, good day to you, hope you're doing well. Going to need a tanker with lightning, the burners, Nick Gray, Sam T. Will be interesting to see if they return with bombs or not. Um, Sam, I think most of them are, um, are uh, they're dummy or practice uh, weapons. There's something else coming out, I can hear it. There's something else coming out. Um, yeah, definitely something else coming out. We need some 35s, come on. I want to show everybody the 35s, man, because I mean, there's a lot of people on here, obviously, who are very knowledgeable in their mili military stuff, and, uh, you know, and it's, it's wonderful to have them here to help me, as well as everybody else, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, um, knowledge and so on and so forth. But these F-35s, are, you know, as a replacement for the F-15, um, eventually, um, having replaced all the F-15Cs here at... Uh, RAF Lake and Heath, new, uh, new complexes being built, new hangars, um, I've got these old um, blast hangars here still, um, from, uh, from way back in the uh, Cold War era would that be, um, these uh, bunkers that are built as they are to withstand any Blasts got blast doors on them as well. You can see there, huge, great big blast doors, um, and they also have the capability, as we've seen at uh, Mildenhall, where the uh, at the back of the at the back of these bunkers is a is a huge sort of like um, uh, exit, where they're able to uh, fire up the engines inside, and um, all the exhaust gases and so on and so forth can be exited through the um, is that they're waiting come on boys come on and girls uh, DC9 looking forward to when they return uh, DC9 I think you'll find that um, yeah there will be uh, there will be touch and uh 
um, run and brakes and all those kinds of things. High speed, like power up, where they won't even touch down. They just go, they just go full on, full throttle at about 60 feet. Jonathan Beale, someone on here said that the Raptor had ceased production. I think it has, to be honest with you. I thought the Raptor was, was, although we've seen them when we were in Anchorage, didn't we? Aren't they Raptors? I'm pretty, pretty sure they were. Oh, Holly, uh, 35s haven't been out till around about 11 o'clock in the last couple of days. Oh, well, that's quite nice. It spreads it out for us, doesn't it? gives the F-15s time to uh, get up and do their thing. Get up, ready to do my thing. Get into it, man. Like a, like a. Uh, Thomas Cleary, we have already done aircraft spotting at Dublin, uh, not at Shannon, but we have at Dublin. Um, obviously, uh, we'll go back there at some point. Great place to visit, lovely people, locals are great. Mikoto. Don't know much about history. Now you can clearly see what I was talking about. Look at either side of the air intakes on the engine. See the, the big bulges there. Uh, if you look at an F-15C head on, uh, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And not only that, they've incorporated um, hangar points for uh, missiles and so on and so forth. This guy's just got a couple of uh, wing mounted uh, Maybe. Oh, his keys has definitely pulled a short straw this morning, and he look. Why don't you just drive it the other way around, mate. Right? You're gonna have a sore neck tonight, son, aren't you? Hey. <laughs> You would have thought there's got to be some reason why he's uh, maybe it doesn't go as fast forwards as it does backwards. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> oh, Steve's always been asked to do that. Hasn't he? Conformal fuel tanks, John Gibson. Thank you. On formal fuel tanks like that. Peregrine Bush. Yes, indeed. LN stands for Lake and Heath. The small number is the fiscal year when the aircraft was purchased by the aircraft. The larger number is the serial number. And the small number is when the aircraft was purchased. Oh, I can't see that. You see the smaller number there, Jilly? Just, uh, Nine one eight, two thousand and eighteen. Then, yeah. Oh, nineteen ninety nine. Oh, thanks, Connors. Big Coningsby Spotters Group. I don't know if there's a group of them sitting all in a room watching, listening, or if it's just one of them. We don't know, uh, but uh, a very good morning to you. Thanks for your updates. Paul B08 forward gear broke. What's that about? Uh, Jamie Reed, Evie Rose, Nigel Coxon, Richard Brown. 
Is it 98? Okay. Thank you, Lance. use shocks um, standard procedure on any aircraft that's being worked on isn't it from a health and safety standpoint thanks Scooby 98 year model serial number 134 so is that the 100 on bumps so as our friends at um, Coningsby Spotters group um, notified us this morning that um, exercises for dual engine um, failure are going to be uh, carried out well actually not today but this week um, dual engine talking about that I mean, it was so, yeah. I, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> um, dual engine failure, uh, that was um, what they told us. Um, I will read it out again. Uh, this is from RAF Coningsby Spotters Group. Um, and this is a ca oh, according to current NOTAM, which was obviously, uh, well, to, it just what is running at the moment. Air exercise, multiple fast jet aircraft will conduct practice engine failure and recovery operations within a five nautical mile radius of Lake and Heath Aerodrome. Aircraft may operate at speeds of up to 450 knots, uh, indicated airspeed, and a rapid descent from 14,000 feet. Well, this cloud base is probably only about um, 5,000 feet, is it? Maybe a little bit... Uh, Yes, I don't know, but um, certainly um, quite low. So we might hear them. 
but not see them. Simon Morris, good morning to you. Tony Rivers, Chris Pym. Nick Gray, Tony Austin. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get burnt, Tony, if you do. Uh, Rachel Van Zella. Susan New, loving it. John Wiley. John Wiley been too long. It has been too long, hasn't it? Although, um, whether they switched up procedures here in terms of their um, activities, whether they're spreading them out or not, but we have we have been here before, where right at the get go, there's been sort of like seven or even you know ten aircraft on the pad there or lined up to go out. Um, some of them coming across here mainly when they're hot pitting though um, that they'll use this pad here interesting to see that they have got the extinguishers out there which may indicate that they're going to be doing something over there a little bit later on uh, perhaps this afternoon I don't know um, in terms of hot pitting when you uh, when you talk about hot pitting it's an exercise where the aircraft would be refueled uh, whilst the engine is still running um, there's a they'll run on one engine um, and uh, have the other one off whilst they refuel um, something that you can clearly see when they taxi out with the with the um, engine intake the um, the upper uh, fin um, an intake fin is uh, is in the shut position Lloyd Bell broken 7,000 feet, there we go. So it is broken 7,000 feet. So um, half the height at which they will be uh, making their, um, carrying out their exercises from. Maybe they're, they won't be doing it t today purely for the reason of there being broken cloud, but I don't know. Is he still going back was on his full lift? He's gone, isn't he? So it might be airfield operations to drive the forklift backwards. Well, uh, okay, I can possibly see that from a health and safety standpoint in terms of like if you drive it forward with the forks um, uh, in the forward position, obviously could potentially be quite hazardous if you were to come into contact with anything. Um, possibly, I don't know. Anthony Cotton, got to love a fast jet Wednesday. fully identify the reasons for uh, for driving that forklift backwards but uh, I think based on all theories I think Mikoto's is the one that's probably the most um, the one that makes most of sense at this point in time because I can't think why it's either that or the thing just will not go it only goes at sort of like two mile an hour or something um, forwards um, but uh, backwards it can go up to you know six mile an hour so <laughs> I don't know why they would do that I do not know um, yeah I, I really don't know <laughs> David Edwards, US Air Force had plans to convert some A-10 airframes to UCAVs. Okay. Wow, look at that. Oh, okay. Uh, US Air Force bought the F-15EX to maintain fleet size as F-22 
that's the Raptor in it, the F22. Uh, production ended. The F35 was still like, okay, so there we go. Nice. Wow. Uh, what was I looking for there? Wow. 1.23 billion dollars for 12 aircraft. 20 aircraft on order by May 22, 22. US Air Force had ordered 144 F-15 EXs. Wow. 2022 May 2022 that goes to show how um, how big a delay the F-35s have is it not that's crazy so they know for sure that because uh, <laughs> look at the lifespan of these F-15s man it's crazy isn't it of course the bottom line is that you cannot uh cannot have a depleted fleet, can you? Hundred and seventy third fighter wing, Kingsley Field, uh, Oregon, uh, is the formal training unit of the FTU for the F thirty five A rather than the F fifteen EX basic F-15 training for both the F-15E and EX will instead take place at Seymour Johnson Air Force Base, North Carolina from 2026 onwards. Well, I have to say, I'm a little bit uh, disappointed with the, with the um, how many have we had up? Five so far? Big Mac has gifted a membership. Thanks, Big Mac. You want fries with that? Thank you, sir. Okay. Latam Dan, may I ask you, did you receive a notification yesterday afternoon? Uh, regarding our stream today, um, I, don't know. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of people on here. There's a lot. Yeah, maybe the YouTube notification. But I have to say, there are a lot of people on here who've been with us for years and years and years, and they still, um, <laughs> still, you know, Wednesdays and Sundays, folks. Wednesdays and Sundays. So it's always Tuesdays and Saturdays that we normally put the notification out. I might do a show notification during the show for an upcoming show, for example. But in general, it's always the same. Wednesdays and Sundays are our show days. Are our show days. So, you know, if you don't get a notification, the best thing to do is turn your... Is your phone's on 99.9% .9 of the time anyway, isn't it? Flick to the YouTube page, see if we're on. Um, or, uh, or just turn on your notifications on I don't know so it's a difficult one what's that GP oh thank you Neil there's a no town for quiet hours between 9am and 10am and quiet hour sorry between 9am and 10am I wonder why that is then Uh, TCC, I googled F-15 customers only Israel, Japan, South Korea, Qatar, Saudi Arabia and Singapore and the US of course. Okay, thank you Latam Dan. Um, not via the app today. Okay. Uh, 
Jonathan Beal, Jerry. I signed up to the app, great way to get notification. Uh, by the way, folks, if you are a new member, make sure, and this applies to members as well, folks, for you wonderful people, um, if you are a member or a or, 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 or but and, and want to chat, you need to obviously uh, um, subscribe to the channel as well. Uh, it's 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 something that we're trying to work with YouTube on in terms of uh, of, of making it so it becomes uh, of, uh, an automatic thing uh, when you become a member that you automatically uh, are subscribed to the channel or you automatically get um, uh, access in for chat but as it stands at the moment and this is completely out of our hands uh, if you are a uh, member then and, and if you've been gifted a membership make sure you subscribe to the channel because that way that you can chat as well and uh, great to see so many of you getting involved as well BA Brent there we go uh, welcome back BA Brent first class member what's that GP Okay, cool. Interesting, we did, never had this before, did we? This nine and 10, this quiet hour. Does everybody walk around the base like that? Hello, sir, how are you? Richard Brown, it will kick off when the F-35s come out. Oh, it will. Yeah, beautiful, big uh, ceramic inlay. I don't know if it is a ceramic inlay. I think it's a ceramic coating, maybe, inside the nozzle area of the uh, F-35s engines. visiting family two weeks ago and seen six Chinooks fly over in formation yeah and then later four Apaches that must have been for the um, fly past wasn't it possibly I'd imagine Kevin Beasley weather for me July the 1st we see the Lancaster at 420 and the Typhoon 430 and the red arrows 115 
Okay. Uh, Ian Wilson, can't see the merchandise store on the app anymore. Uh, apps. Why? Mm. Yeah, because of technical issues that we were having, um, Ian. Um, and thanks for bringing it up. Yeah, we. Uh, it was. It was a Google um, issue, and the only way that we could keep the app from running was was to take the store off. Um, but if you want merchandise, then just go to uh, bigjet.shop um, or bigjettv.shop or, or either way, uh, both work, both are, are, are running um, smoothly and you can uh, get yourself one of the uh, authentic range. designed by uh, us, <laughs> nobody else, um, far more comfortable I have to say than the old uh, t-shirts, much more give in these ones, more el elasticity, elasticity, elas yes, give. Simon Morris asked for a shout out, four year old nephew, uh, Wilson Robert Simon Rowe. Uh, wow, that's a fair old name on you, mate. Wilson Robert Simon Rowe. Loves the channel, uh, but thinks all planes are 380s, oh bless. Well, you know, it is the way it is. Uh, when you're a kid that age, blimey, four years old, you're not expected to know one uh, aircraft from another, are you really? Um, unless you're one of those amazing mathematician kids that you see from time to time, who know the, um, or you can ask them any question, it's like, how the hell did you learn that? You know, <laughs> I'm 60 years old and I didn't even know the uh, square root of that and then whatever. Uh, Renny Jensen, um, Pratt & Whitney, uh, F-135 turbo fan is a bit more, it's, I don't know which one it is mate, I don't know which one it is. Okay. You got it? Lloyd Bell looks like a BAF Falcon 7X is inbound to here or Mildenhall. Um, BAE Systems uh, we've seen at Coningsby run a lot, don't they? Um, into, uh, into Coningsby, but they use uh, a, um, is it an ERJ or a CRJ or something like that? Susan knew, never can work out what those heavy metal constructions are in front of those sheds. Heavy metal constructions. Uh, I think, Susan, I think you might be referring to those there. They're the doors, they're the sliding doors of the, uh, of the uh, as you can see, they are in two, uh, two halves there uh, and they will slide together um, and uh, protect the inside. Mad Mac UK, Eddie S. Ah, oh, Nick Gray encountered a nice six year old child playing spotter at Heathrow last week with a note page keeping track of every aircraft. Six years old? Blimey, uh, that's a bit keen, isn't it? 
uh, Lord Geeker out of hospital big jet TV to keep me company great to see you Lloyd Geeper Lord Geeker sorry uh, Clev Bolton liking the t-shirt Belgium Air Force Lloyd Bell thank you BAF uh, Lennon Polanco uh, but lads got my original big jet TV shirt t-shirt on there we go Blast Doors Lennon, there we go. Thank you Lennon, they are indeed Blast Doors. Uh, Nigel go B system taxi from Wharton to Connorsby and Lossy Mountain in Brea 145. Here we go folks, here we go. I know you've been waiting patiently, thank you for your patience. Mind that transit. What's that, GP? Uh, Lars, no, the um, the merchandise is procured from, well, from, from different regions, to be honest with you. Where did he go? Um, mostly the US. Um, and I have to say, they're pretty damn quick with their, uh, with their, with their procurements. Of course, got the hats, haven't they? Nobody saw my red hat there, did they? Anyone see my red hat? I don't know. Nigel Betts. Lloyd Bell, never mind. Falcon is going into Cambridge. Must be available in the UK for my receiver. Uh, Reagan O'Neill, uh, ADSB uh, is where you need to look for these military jets. The logo, what the cat? You'd have to, wouldn't you? So there's obviously quite a lot of um, armaments slung under that wing. Uh, so obviously more tags and pins to remove than normal. I believe, I'm, I, I'm imagining that would be the case. More inspections, should I say.
So they're not checking the plane for anything, so to speak, Paul. Well, they, they are, they're, they're just doing an overall visual inspection, but also mainly um, to remove um, pins from, uh, and tags and so forth uh, from the aircraft. You can see them carrying them, actually. Um, making sure that hatches are closed and sealed off and um, general inspection. Keep tires light fires. So there will be a, um, a pre-taxi inspection, I would imagine, uh, by the ground crew inside the, um, the hangars um, or from wherever they've come from, the stand. Um, but they wouldn't want to be taxiing um, with live armaments so to speak weapons um, so I guess the reason why they wait until they're out here uh, is for safety reasons in their country they don't even have planes what's going on there then <laughs> where can you live where they don't have planes uh, we've got to be on a little island in it on a little rock or something <laughs> I don't know must be lovely where you live Dion and I come there for the weekend and just nothing. No, I'd miss it within minutes, mate. Take me to a paradise beach in Bermuda or wherever it might be. Within minutes, I'm like, oh, I, just, I need to, I need to, uh, I need to do something here. Just sit in the deck chair for about all of three minutes. Right, okay. Uh, check the phone. Um, <laughs> nearest airport. Okay, Google nearest airport. Oh dear. Big B. <laughs> Running against and present the F thirty five uses Pratt and the F. 30 F-135 turbofan engine um, or the F-135's Dash 600 version for the Marine F-35B uh, jump jet model. Yeah, there's uh, three different variants actually of 35, isn't there? There is the A, which is the all sort of like um, airfield um, uh, setup. Uh, the B, which is um, uh, S. T V O L, isn't it? Estival, uh, the short takeoff, um, as in a very sh small space area. S T V O L or something. And then there is the carrier uh, based va uh, variant as well, which is the same as the B, I think, um, but uh, probably has a few different features on it.
J Mank, bit like I was in when I was in Venice. Zero cars, ball. Yeah, but you know you've got to. Well, it is a little bit of one of those things, isn't it? Where you might go somewhere and you're a little bit sort of like, oh, I can hear an engine start. Stovel. Okay, Richard Brown, the F35B Stovel, and the C is the carrier variant. Okay, there we go. Stovel. Okay. Jack loves Minecraft. I can hear 35. I can hear. NASA 15 starting up right down the other end of the airfield. I think we might have a pretty decent um, showing of uh, F-15s in a short while, folks. Oh, FN operator, F-35C does have the folding wings and beefier gear. So there is a folding wing variant, and understandably so. Um, tight is uh, sorry space is uh, at a premium on board um, carriers although I will say I remember playing golf once and the uh, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a at a golf club a golf course called Blackmoor uh, here in the UK and I remember standing on the tee and the starter he said uh, we were looking at the green. You could see the green, obviously, from the from the tee, but it was, I think, it was, you know, some crazy amount of distance, 435 yards or something like that. And he said, from this tee to the uh, to the to, to, to the, the, the the front edge of the green is the length of um, what's our aircraft carrier? I'm just gonna. Uh, Eric, I guarantee you, you will hear the nozzle actuators. 100% guarantee it. Uh, as he moves off, or she moves off, uh, but then also um, uh, as they uh, squeeze and activate, literally, um, for the afterburners. Ben Brown got buzzed by one of these F-15s up in the Lake District last week when doing my geography field work. Wow. Wow, 150 foot down one of the reservoirs. Wow, yeah, what a great shot. Um, Nick Gray, HMS Queen Elizabeth. There we go, thank you. Uh, in Prothero, just bought one of those t-shirts you're wearing and a 747 one uh, to wear on my Lufty 747 flight from Frankfurt to EWR in September. Ian, that's fantastic. Uh, lots of people do look at me when I'm wearing that uh, 747 shirt. I don't know if it's, they're looking at me or looking at the shirt, but uh, it is definitely a, a pretty funky design, is it not? I like the 777 one as well. We're going to introduce a 777X variant t-shirt as well for anybody who wants it. Uh, Beverly George, don't worry about being feeling naive. It's not, it's it's perfectly normal to uh, to ask that question. The pins that they're removing are um, to uh, to arm to to arm the um, arm the, the, the weapons. I think is basically what it is um, in terms of steering pins and stuff like that that we have with uh, with the commercial aircraft that we see it's not that because obviously they need to steer the aircraft from their uh, from their bunker or from their stand to this position here so uh, no sort of like locking pins they are locking pins but they are arming pins I think are they not Rachel Vanzella, thank you. Uh, 
and engraved safety pins on weapons. There we go. Oh, Richard Brown, the 835C has an eight foot bigger wingspan. Wow. And the 208 square foot greater area than the A or B variants. Wow. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? Eight foot bigger wingspan. So four feet either side. Oh, I'd like to see. I'd like to see an example of that with with the three uh, variants, all sort of like um, from a, a top perspective. Uh, Monkey Boy F15. Yes, it's the capability. It's the top speed of the uh, F15. the Mac point, doesn't it? Mac 2.5 uh, to be precise, at high altitude. 900 mile an hour, or 1,448 kilometers per hour. Uh, M1.2 at low altitude. So 2.5 at high altitude, 1.2 at low altitude. And like we were talking about earlier, um, in terms of the thrust, the power of these engines, it's kind of a crazy thing because you're talking about two totally different types of, of aeroplane here power to weight ratio on this thing is something incredible. It's got service ceiling uh, altitude of 60,000 feet. Um, G limits are nine, a plus nine. The rate of climb is 50,000 feet a minute. Just try and work that one out, folks. 50,000 feet a minute. That's a lot of DHL 300s, isn't it? We talk about, what was it? We've seen them going up at 5,000 feet a minute. Um, and this thing can go at 50,000 feet a minute. Meeks, um, we do have extra sized shirts. I'm not sure how big it goes up to, but uh, I know that, uh, again, it's it's not our own procurement. We design all our merchandise ourselves and that then uh, gets added into the store, so. Lowy family putting it in his perspective 833 feet per second. That's insane. What's going on here? Have they just pulled some line out there? Um, almost some like some. Uh, it's not a Jenny there, is it? Is that a mobile Jenny they've got there? Hooking something up. Uh, 
Alec Padley, one of your hats, he has one of the hats and wears it at Coningsby and EMA while visiting. Thank you, my friend. Don't feel worried about wearing it anywhere else, Alec. <laughs> You'll be fine. Brian Stewart, I don't know. Um, indeed, what is the highest number of Gs that a human can take? Uh, you have to have a G suit, that's for sure. If you're going to be, uh, first you have to be trained in the uh, in the art of being able to withstand G's. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was definitely some kind of a line they pulled out there. Was that uh, is it a USB cable? HDMI, perhaps? 13 amp plug. Right, OK, 13. And out for the nozzles. Hello. They're not happy, they're going back. Just make it back in time for bargain hunt. That's the second one we've seen uh, DNF today. Oh, uh, Darren um, saying that this is the same jet that came and went back earlier. Rab H hydraulic leak. Rachel Vanzella, they put the pins back in the weapons. Yeah, they would need to if they're, uh, once it's past those gates, once it's uh, that side of those gates, I think it's, um, I think it's standard procedure that they have the pins. Yeah, so what was that all about, I wonder? Next, please. What's going on?
Digital David, do you have to get permission to film plane spot at RF bases? No, Digital David, you do not. Um, quite frankly, it's uh, like I've mentioned before, this is a uh, dedicated spotting area. Uh, there's our friends down there who uh, very kindly um, furnished me with coffee earlier on. And this is, um, like I say, a dedicated area which is um, sometimes um, visited by the station commander. He's been out here a couple of times. Um, say hello to a few people. Um, very friendly people here. Uh, I mean, the, the bottom line is, at the end of the day, folks, if you can't beat them, join them, if you see what I mean. Because, you know, regardless of what happens, you're always going to have people, enthusiasts, who are going to be taking photographs. Uh, and whether they are positioned uh, half a mile away um, with a 500mm lens and they're able to see, you know, the whites of the pilot's eyes, literally, um, or, um, you know, so doing it all secretly under, you know, um, rather, rather that than, you know, let people access it and watch it uh, be proud of what you've got as well um, rather than keeping it all completely under wraps that's the way I look at it anyway Rachel Vance had a German military 319 flying over to the south Emma Toza, good day to you. Uh, be aware of security issues and posting videos. Uh, Jay, I don't know. Posting videos. There's very 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 little if anything that these guys can do about somebody coming up here coming up here videoing something from the fence um, and uploading it to whatever social media channel they want to at any point in time this is public area right here and therefore as a you know you you you're entitled to do whatever you like and post whatever you like say whatever you like obviously if you start sticking things through the fence um, that resemble anything other than a camera, uh, they'll be on you like uh, flies on um, 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 a dead piece of meat. <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm a little bit sort of like, you know, uh, come on F-35s, it's ten past ten. Now where are they going? Going back to the hut for a cup of tea, maybe. I don't know. Don't shut the door. Don't shut the door. Oh, shut the door. Now we're all out here on our own now. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, cool car, man. Like that. Gig, 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 gig. Yeah, he's brought that over from his hometown, hasn't he? Mind you, he might have bought it from the uh, Ford garage down the road, I don't know. Ross Tyrrell, yes indeed. We have been airside with these guys. I can hear jets to my right. I can hear a jet. 
There's going to be something coming out in a minute, folks. Don't you worry about it. BAL, I got stopped plane spotting at Gatwick so many times I gave up and I only live a mile away at the time. Plane spotting at Gatwick. Well, BAL, you must have been somewhere where it was unauthorised. That's all I can say. There are positions at Gatwick where, or, or any airport where, you know, like for instance, if you're standing within three metres of the fence, I think it is, you have to be three metres away from the fence. It's one of the first things I learned when I started Big Jet TV. Actually, uh, it was Jet Scope Jerry at that point, wasn't it? <laughs> Jet Scope Jerry. There's an engine start. Now that sounds like an F-35 engine starting. That definitely sounds like an F-35 engine starting and not a uh, 15. But anyway, we'll have to see. Kevin Jackson, local garages do sell American cars as airmen sell and buy them. Okay, yes. Is he coming back? <laughs> is he coming back or is this? Okay, well it's uh, 15. That's for sure. ship any more for any more yeah, yeah, I was on the public perimeter road near the end of the runway Oh, if you're in a car um, on the public perimeter roads, yeah. It's a tricky one, that, isn't it? Depends on how. I know, I kind of know where you're coming from on that one, BAL. Here we go, boys and girls. Here we go.
how flimsy those flight surfaces look, man. That is incredible. Glad we caught that. It's a four ship going up. <laughs> nice. So by not long now before we're likely to see one or maybe two of the uh, departing jets from earlier on coming back. Uh, so keep me posted with that folks. I know a lot of you were uh, checking ADSB. Um, so please keep me posted on that because I need to be, all of a sudden it can just appear um, out of nowhere, a bit like Mr. Ben. Kate Nash has upgraded to first class. Kate, thank you very much indeed. And um, a warm welcome to first class. A sky scan hand um, not done the Eastbourne Air Show sky scan hand firstly because uh, well we just haven't have we uh, yeah. consider it a couple of years ago I seem to recall JZ Cedar Markings 9M oh, on the vertical state. Lloyd Bell, none of these showing on ADSB. So this is going to be a, a rapid deployment, folks. Phil Boardman, most of the time the F-15 doesn't show on ADSB. Okay, Richard Brown also confirmed, 15s and 35s very rarely show on ADSB, unlike the Typhoons. Okay, there we go. Thank you for that. Rachel Vanzella, Finland Learjet just took off from Cambridge, possibly acting as a target. Yeah. Like that. Oh, <laughs> I see what you're saying now, Gold, Gold Hawk Road. A trucker stopped his car transporter on the Heathrow Perimeter Road and sat in a car on the top deck to spectate. Now, did he do that because it had broken down? But obviously not. He didn't notice uh, the police arrived until they started the engine and moved it off. So, uh, well, there we go. You don't do that kind of thing, not with a sodding great big transporter as well. Eve Hoskin in the lurker's lounge at work. What we need to see is a deployment of personnel out on this pad here as well folks because uh, 
that would indicate hot pit exercises, normally anyway. Boho Jane. Normal aircraft being kept clear of the air. Oh, Goldhawk Road, this is when you could stand by the perimeter fence. Yes, I'm with you, right. <laughs> That's great, isn't it? You definitely wouldn't see that these days, though, but uh, yeah, fair play to the fella. <laughs> you back in the 90s there weren't like high high fences were there or was it just a fence but none of that um, annoying uh, panelling that they put up uh, at exactly the right height so you couldn't sort of like rubber neck as you went past if you see what I mean Yeah, I did, I did. Wow, look at that, he hates me. Virtue signalling, man, virtue signalling.
Yeah, I don't know if they have to um, deal with them independently. Um, so as they start on each aircraft, then they put chocks under the, maybe not all the wheels, but one of, one of the wheel sets. And then move on to the next one, chock that up. Hey up, chock. Uh, Bell, um, don't go to RAF Marham for a number of reasons. Um, one of which is uh, out of respect for the local community uh, because there are very few parking areas and spotting. There isn't any uh, official spotting area RAF Marham. Um, and um, <coughs> the locals are sort of like, you know, um, You know, it's, it, it, imagine coming out your house or coming home um, one afternoon to your own house, and you've and, you, and all the whole street's just full of vehicles, and you can't park outside your own house um, or anywhere near it. That's kind of the the uh, thing they're up against at uh, Marham because it's a very small local community, um, and I, as far as I'm aware, there is no. Um, going to be at Tenmouth Air Show this year folks. Tynemouth, sorry. No more air shows folks. I'm done with it. I'm fed up with the um, waffling on of, of um, people when the aircraft are trying to do their talking. Um, I do talk a lot but I generally tend to shut me gob when, um, when, uh, when the aircraft's um, with us so to speak. Um, You'll notice that's the way I roll in terms of uh, my commentary. And uh, one thing I don't do is run preposterous music over it. Uh, and I say preposterous because I can't think of, well, you know, trying to be polite about it. Um, but uh, yeah. It was almost like. Uh, You know the way that the, the way that they um, ran that music over that Spitfire uh, display at um, at Paris was uh, was an absolute shambles, uh, and that kind of like and and not only that, but I was trying to do edits, trying to do some edits um, post show, and I couldn't because the the sequences would have been too short <laughs> because there's all this bleeding racket going on in the background you know like you know it, it's it might work on a video sometimes but with it in the background and coupled with um, people waffling on um, like I say if I was an air show organizer I would say to those who were doing the commentary guys listen can we keep it to this do all your talking like we are now do all your talking about the uh, aircraft and it's capabilities and its history and, and provenance and all those kinds of things the pilot flying it whoever it is do it while the things on the floor on the ground as soon as it's taken off um, even if it's do even when it's in it's sort of like you know um, uh, 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 when it's setting up to do its display you can take it all the way up to there if you want but obviously you want to get the sound of the aircraft going out as well so really they should make it law, so to speak. I know it's crazy, but you know, um, it's more about etiquette, isn't it? Etiquette for the aircraft itself, having a bit of respect for the uh, for the aircraft, especially a historical aircraft like a Spitfire. You can't run 
terrible music over something like that over a Merlin engine I watched uh, I watched one of the Paris air shows own streaming um, channels uh, later on in the day or, or, or no actually it was on the I think it was on the Sunday um, and it was terrible it was absolutely terrible there was they were filming the the the, 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 uh, the Spitfire display. Couldn't couldn't even hear the engine. Uh, you just got this guy talking over it and uh, and the music in the background. So you know, uh, having having no no, it's not. It, it, it is possible, but what they've done is, Julie, they've they've pulled back the audio. From the from outside, so that so that it doesn't pick the music up. Do it our way, you know. Do it our way. Don't follow the sheep. Do it our way, you know. Do it your way. No, I don't seem to recall when I was a kid that they had, a, they had their music back in the days with the air shows. I think they've copied the Americans, to be honest with you. In all respect to the Americans, you know, if they want to do it, they can do it. But why do why do why do we have to do it? Um, you know, uh, just let the aircraft do the talking, mate. You know. Here we go. Yeah. 
Matthew Court volume to max. Sam Hathaway, a full send. Yeah, literally stuck the stamp on the envelope. Sent it. Absolutely awesome. Three aircraft still sitting in that ship. Uh, John 45305, are the F-35s at base or deployed? I believe they're here, John. Don't think they're um, anywhere else. As far as I'm aware, I think they're, they're here. Uh, somebody mentioning earlier on that... Here he comes again. So flimsy to those flight surfaces, man. Incredible. Incredible. The trim tabs on the vertical rudders there, or uh, on the ver vertical stabilizers. Or is that the. No, I think they. they...
yeah, nice. And pray silence for the night again, or the skylark. Matthew Court, my neighbour hates me now, but I don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, say about that. Mad Mac. Indeed, afterburners do provide more power on takeoff, um, but use a lot more fuel. Never gets old, does it? High speed wing floof. Yeah, it is a shame about the low cloud, but it is what it is, Rab. Still hearing jets. I have a sneaking suspicion we might see some jets arriving from that side, because there are more um, bunkers over on over to our right. Somebody saying, uh, Avro Arrow, is Lake and Heath the largest RAF base? That I don't know. Jeffrey Phillips, how do the afterburners work? Well, I think it's all um, uh, a, a process, isn't it? In terms of like max more fuel being fed into the uh, into the uh, to the exhaust or to the to the to the combustion chamber, so to speak, um, which is basically like a turbocharger. It just gives much much more power, and I think the nozzles squeezing or uh, or, or reducing that the 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 the, um, the back of the engine size uh, increases the power as well. Uh, boot will let's say yeah fuel injected into the back of the engine I think it is yeah, I think it's more fuel um, that is uh, yeah, I remember somebody saying that the you know it is it is a, a, a case of more fuel being injected but I don't quite understand there is it? if it's at the back end hasn't everything been done by then um, just have a look Okay, the afterburner increases thrust primarily by accelerating the exhaust gas to a higher velocity. Okay, accelerating the exhaust gas to a higher velocity. Is that the, um, uh, while the mass of the fuel added to the exhaust does contribute to an increase in thrust, this effect is small compared to the increase in exhaust velocity. I think that exhaust velocity is the increase is from the the squeezing of the nozzles at the back I believe um, uh, visual indications afterburners do produce markedly enhanced thrust as well as typically a very large flame at the back of the engine this exhaust flame may show uh, shock diamonds which we do see uh, which are caused by shock waves uh, formed due to slight differences between ambient pressure and the exhaust pressure. Uh, these imbalances cause oscillations in the exhaust jet diameter over a distance and cause the visible banding where the pressure and temperature is highest. How about that? We've got a bit of um, field maintenance going on here, which is a little bit odd during exercises, I have to say. I um, don't know why that is. Uh, jet engine thrust is governed by the general principle of mass flow rate. 
This is something that I'd have to uh, read over and over and over again. <laughs> uh, thrust depends on two things, the velocity of the exhaust gas and the mass of that gas. A jet engine can produce more thrust by either accelerating the gas to a higher velocity or by having greater mass of gas exit the engine. Designing a basic turbojet engine around the second principle produces the turbofan engine, um, which creates slower gas, but more of it. Turbofans are highly fuel efficient and can deliver high thrust for long periods of time, but the design trade-off is a large size relative to the power output to uh, generate the increased power with a more compact engine for short periods of time an engine requires an afterburner so there you have it uh, kind of what we were talking about in terms of the um in terms of squeezing the the nozzle at the back of the engine increases the 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 the, the, the exhaust gases like it increases the power of them um, Exhaust velocity, I think. I think that's the, what we're talking about. Got another two F15s. So you want more? You want more? You're gonna get it. time to do the grass cone that's all I've, I, I just think it's a little bit unless of course it is not the key using and they are in no way uh, in line with the jet blast because obviously that would be uh... Yeah. It was very um apparent to see the uh the um the movement in it with the F thirty five display at Paris um, was the uh, was the, how how flimsy and how manoeuvrable that jet is in terms of its capabilities to go from you know five six hundred mile an hour down to you know almost almost stopping and doing a turn um, those um, now would they be called um, would they be called elevons? I think they're elevons, the, uh, the, the, the tail uh, horizontal stabiliser. Um, it's a complete surface, unlike a, unlike a, a conventional uh, um, stabiliser system with a, with a, with a, oh, he's, uh, he's making a run for it. Go on, son. Oh, bless him. Mind his own, oh, well, it's just, Doing a bit of plane spotting, look. Um, yeah, unlike conventional um, flight surfaces on a on a conventional aircraft, where you have a, a stabilizer and then a, an, an, an elevator attached to that, which is up or down, which is used primarily in the in the rotate process of the aircraft. Um, these are a one-piece fixed structure. Well, 
it's a it's a movable structure and I think it's known as the Elevon um, so part elevator part aileron so it's actually um, you know not only uh, uh, um, aids in the in the in the, the pitch of the aircraft but also uh, in the maneuverability as well working alongside all the other flight surfaces uh, on the wings um, high and low speed ailerons etc etc Seem to be that bothered, really. It's his little ears, look. Oh. British Airways. <laughs> All coming out. Of there. Hey, you want to move, son? Want to move because he's uh, he's coming up on you pretty fast. Noticed him. He's coming up on you, son. He's coming up on you. Oh, yeah. Why don't you just go right and then you'd be alright? the F-35s folks. They will be here. The hair related comments coming out. Get them all out. Let's get them all out so that they're all done for. That's a Hercules, mate. That's a C-130, isn't it? Going out of the hall. If he be, if he was playing football, he'd be using a hairball. Don't really work that one, does it? <laughs> Sorry, that's pretty lame. That one, isn't it? I'll get me coat. Hello, what's that coming over the hill? Big red things. Don't know what they are. Can't see from heat hairs like. Uh, 
Uh, Ross Tyrrell, yeah, but that might be... Here we go. US Air Force. Um, Hercules. these nozzles squeeze. Pressure is increased. It's always one, isn't it? What's the point in bringing your car to somewhere like this? It's got a sensitive car alarm. Oh, I don't know. Next, please. F-35s, please. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, it is. It's a very old aeroplane from back in the 1950s era, isn't it? The DH-84. First flew in 32, blimey. Say the 50s. Flipping heck. I can hear it. Or is that... Can I hear that dragon or is this... Or is it the tractor? Sounds sort of like, you know. Powered by two de Havilland Gypsy Major four cylinder air cooled inverted inline piston engines. Piston powered, like the Merlin. In line, mind that.
bilge pump. Sky King. Jimmy G, afterburner didn't look quite. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest with you, quite often they're out of sequence, the uh, the afterburners, in terms of their 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 intenseness. Oh, blimey. Oh, he's not having a lot of luck, is he, the old fella? Mind you, I think he's quite used to it, isn't he? The old um, tractor over there, Lloyd. Now he's making another run for it. Go on, son. I think they're... Um, Do their own thing. Go on, son, off you go in the nice long grass. Got big ears, isn't he? Yeah, that big nose. A uh, Mac Cat Lady. At this point in time, it's been all F15s. We're waiting the arrival or the, um, <coughs> the movement of the 35s. I do hope they're not having the flipping day off uh, from F35. I can't imagine they would do. Um, oh dear. I heard that. Seven four seven. Have you checked over Negus Landor and BOAC yet? In what respect? Uh, you're talking about their 747 checked over them. I believe both of them are going to uh, eventually meet the um, their final demise, unfortunately. Um, one which was doing any uh, form that they are even doing. Uh, mind you, they do it at Heathrow while they're still on manoeuvres, don't they? Still aircraft taxiing around the airfield. Tractor cam. I seem to recall, I'm pretty sure that when we've been here in the past, people have um, mentioned, you know, there's a two ship coming back or what is that Coningsby? I think that might be Coningsby. Uh, F-15 or F-3? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Sanj Sharma, Jerry, do you wear uh, ear protection? No, I don't, Sanj. I uh, remember the VC-10 taking off at Bryce Norton had tinnitus for a week. Well, I, you know, it's, they're far enough away to not need um, ear protection. Although, if you're bringing kids or uh, anybody who has, does have, uh, is, uh, you know, any sort of um, hearing issues or uh, sensitive ears, then I would always recommend bringing some kind of ear protection, whether they're uh, ear muffs or uh, the little foamy things that you stick in your ear. Stephen, 
80. Where I, when I was there last week, 12 F-35s went up about one o'clock. Nothing in the morning, just F-15s. Oh, well, that's, uh, thanks, Stephen. That's basically completely opposite to what we've had so far today. Um, I think we've had like, um, probably 10, at least 10 F-15s going up. Hold on, here we go. Here we go, I thought I heard something. Sometimes they will deploy that speed brake uh, whilst they're in the air as well. Depends on pilot preferences really, doesn't it, I guess. That was a pretty hefty landing, that, uh, that first one, wasn't it? Okay, so that's the first two ship. First one that went out this morning was a single on its own, wasn't it? But I was very uh, lucky to cra catch that because I was listening, you see. Gary Boke's long jump record. That was a proper long jump, wasn't it? I thought for a minute it was going to go around. Or it was perhaps a touch and go exercise or something. Alex Lovell guess that deploying the air brake pushed it down on the first generating more downward force and hence the bounce. Makes sense that one, Alex. 747 fan. Um, I'm, I'm as hopeful as you are, 747 fan. Lovell, Valkyrie Ops radio checked with Ramrod F-35s due soon. I think that's what he's saying. Uh, Paul B-08, morning jets now on their way back to base. So, um, well, we're probably over the next 40 minutes, I'd imagine that we're going to be waiting for them. Alex Hilton Hook did a low pass to Cambridge. It's coming around again soon. Doom, 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 doom. Alex Lovell, air brake was deployed when airframe was still 50 feet. Uh, they do, like I say, sometimes deploy that air brake when they're um, when they're um, in flight, so to speak. Yeah. 
JZ. That first one didn't have much under the wings, so perhaps he was a bit lighter than usual. Mm. I think it, to be honest with you, it's either just an error uh, in judgment or um, maybe a rookie pilot or, you know, just, just got it out of sequence, which, you know, let's face it, even the most, um, even the most, um, Seasoned pilots can make those kind of uh, mistakes, can't they? Tail three one one inbound. Is that right? Nick Gray, a fifteen E on the flight. Okay, okay, top. Oh, there he is. I got him, I got him, I got him long range. Hopefully we might see a little... Uh, It's there, folks. Trust me. He's there. It's great for the grass cutters. There's two of them. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, I think I might be wrong in terms of that uh, speed brake deployment whilst airborne. Um, you know, it, again, it's down to pilot preference how they feel in terms of the deployment itself, but uh, I think it may have been an air show display that I saw uh, 
the um, the air brake being deployed uh, during an air show, a low speed pass or something like that. I don't know, but um, I probably uh, couldn't hear what the uh, either the commentator was saying because of the music, or uh, couldn't hear the um, com I just couldn't hear anything, you know. But anyway. Uh, Now, some fives. Andy Kitson's here. Marshall's own Cambridge Airport. Most of the Hercules from many European nations are serviced there. Marshall's also built noses of the Concords. Uh, they're also painted and kitted out. Uh, they also painted out and kitted out the Boris jet. Andy Kitson, thank you. Hope you're well, friend. <laughs> Okay, um, do you want to put that up now then, Julie? Just putting a map up for you, folks. Sorry about that. It's the um Okay, I'm just waiting for it to come up. There it is. Okay folks, as you can see, um from the uh north eastern end of the field there, um there is a spectator area uh specifically designated for uh plane spotters. Uh, military historians, um, aviation fans, whatever you want to do, photographers, videographers, um, help yourselves and come and um, you can zoom in on the screen by the way folks uh, so you can see exactly where we are and in fact it's actually noted on the map there as the RAF Lake and Heath viewing area so it's a uh, GP, map off please, map off. Big nose TV. <laughs> Marshals are relocated to Cranfield, Nigel Gower. Oh, okay. Two ship inbound. Kevin Mottershaw. Didn't get notifications, even though he's got notifications on. Kevin, all I can suggest is that um, try to broaden your um, your uh, your notification um, YouTube and um, YouTube and the app. I'm guessing. Milled it all, isn't it?
China Bee. I think that is it, isn't it? Oh yeah, Fairford, of course. Fairford is a US uh, um, Air Force base, isn't it? Are they all US Air Force bases? Blimey. Wow. Alconbury. Richard Brown. F-15 hot pitting. Really? Is that that one down there? So If they hot pit, they'll come up here, wouldn't they? And they come up to this... Wow, there's 10 US Air Force, operational US Air Force bases in the UK. I'm hearing folks. So just call into Wiki, yeah. So just um, inquisitive as to the uh, Whether they're the two jets, are they the two jets that just arrived? Yes, indeed. Mildenhall, Lake and Heath, right slap bang next to each other as the crow flies literally a couple of miles, about 20 minute drive from here to Mildenhall. I was going to say, uh, Chris, Chris Coward, um, or Kaywood, Alconbury closed in the 90s. Yeah, I feel, I'm sure that Alconbury is not operational anymore. Michael Barber, how long's Lake and Ethan Milden all been US Air Force? Michael, I would guess the best thing to do is Google it. Avro Arrow, um, what does hot pit mean? Good question, Avro Arrow, my apologies for, uh, it basically means that uh, it's, a, it's an exercise that um, they will use to, uh, to refuel the jets whilst they are still um, uh, operational, so to speak. So, you know, normally, um, if the aircraft comes back, under normal conditions and is uh, it will uh, go through its normal shutdown procedures and weapons pins and all that kind of thing but these guys will exercise to um, refuel these jets up as quickly as possible uh, and um, will leave one of the engines running I think it's normally the uh, I think it's normally the um, the left engine, the port engine, but uh, I don't know if they were literally just waiting there to be um, given clearance to move back to their position, uh, to their, their bunkers. I think that might be the case. This, uh, we got to a loner, a single jet about to touch down.
nice. What's that now? Kevin Jackson, there are two Vermont ANG F35As departing soon for the USA. Uh, is that out of here? Chris Hall. US Air Force moved into the Mildenhall, into Mildenhall in the late 50s. Uh, well, yeah, they certainly used to have an air show, didn't they, at Mildenhall? Um, I think I went to one with me mum way back in the day. And that would have been in the 70s slash 80s. Stephen Bale, so much better watching on a 60 inch screen. I mean, blind. 60 inch? It's massive, isn't it? Mm. And Damien Eves. Yeah, otherwise known as uh, aero braking is uh, when they're using the wing, uh, when they when they put it up on its um, sit up and beg I guess is the best way to describe it um, when they're aero braking using the, 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 the aircraft's natural um, the wings to slow it down um, I'm guessing that uh, they've got quite small wheels haven't they so I'd imagine that they're uh, their braking systems are not, I mean, they're obviously efficient, but they don't have, I don't think, uh, the, the multiple cluster of discs uh, like we see on a commercial jetliner anyway. Let's just have a little look. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I'm seeing that an F-15 braking system has around about three discs in it. What the hell was that? 
a sudden. You say do no day. What are you doing out there, eh? What are you for? Possibly the uh, wing commander. Uh... Morning, Faldeo! UTC Aerospace Systems receives Boeing installation approval for F-15 wheels and brakes as US Air Force Fleet retrofit continues. So a much more um, robust um, system, I'm guessing. Uh, UTC Aero break, uh, Aerospace um, Systems brakes with proprietary um, carbon heat sink material have a mean time between overhaul that's three to four times longer wow so obviously I'd imagine that uh, The, um, the the older one um, boltsless wheels employ a lock ring design, substantially lowering maintenance time and cost. In addition, in addition to reduce parts count when compared to traditional bolted aircraft wheels. So there we go. When we talk about bolted aircraft wheels, we're talking about literally like you have on your um, on your car folks with your um, the locking nuts or the wheel nuts um, there are some traditional systems that use that but you know um, as I mentioned the other day uh, commercial airliners have been using the uh, the single system for quite some time now in terms of like you know being able to do a brake change, effect a brake change in very little time. Um, with this 2E757 that I actually saw it happening right in front of my eyes. Um, obviously, the um, I think that the actual uh, removal of the tire itself from the hub assembly. Uh, from the wheel, um, when I say hub, I mean the rim, the wheel rim, um, is a split rim system, um, which makes it obviously, again, is a much more uh, um, uh, beneficial system to, uh, to standard rims. It's definitely engine style. Though. So either those 15s that have just returned back and they're just going back to stand. Oh, we do, here we go, folks. F-35s, here we go. Now it's time for some comparative noise. Lockheed. Single seat of this one, folks. Doesn't have a wizzo in it. Uh, it's just uh, operated by a single pilot. You can hear the difference in the uh, engine note. It is a single engine. Lots and lots of modern electronic um, surveillance equipment and all kinds of things going on in these jets. Single Pratt and Whitney F 
135 PW100 after burning turbo fan. And by golly, oh gosh, is it an impressive system, man. Look how compact this jet is and how small it is compared to the F-15. You see one of these lined up next to it, you'll see what I'm talking about. Just going to catch this uh, F-15, be rude not to. pounds of thrust available on these engines all the pre-flight checks and uh, everything um, has been done on these jets of course all the equipment is up inside the belly of this thing stealth is the name here okay here we go Okay, interesting. That's good. They're going to come over to this pad here and sit here for a little bit, I think. Does that look on his 60 inch TV screen? Yeah. Are these possibly the two that are going back to. Is that VT? Is that Vermont? I mean, I'm just making it up with it. Mean, in terms of. That's definitely not a Lake and Heath jet, is it? Where's VT? It is Vermont. Okay, so this is the Vermont Jets, two Vermont Jets going back to the United States. Um, cool. So they will need, I'd imagine, a couple of um, air to air refueling exercises. Wow, they've been asked to hold for 20 minutes to align for the tankers. Wow, Alex Lovell. Uh, Joanna B, great question. And yes, the answer is yes, they will have uh, a pilot controlled um, air system within the cockpit, air conditioning system within the cockpit. It's a fair old hold, isn't it? Stephen Bale, thank you. He's a The 
Grey One fight, 158th fighter win based in Burlington, Vermont. So I was quite surprised actually going back to the braking system on the F15. It's, uh, especially the retrofit new system. It's impressive, isn't it? Three disc. Uh, San Sharma. Um, I'm guessing so. These aircraft will need to, um, there'll be waypoints along the way where they will uh, pick up the refueling jets and um, and feed from them. Yeah. I think the lawnmower's got a rollover bar because for health and safety reasons, and in case it hits a bank or something and rolls over. Not that it's going to be racing in the. Um, Acropolis rally tomorrow morning. Easy right over crest, don't cut. 140 into easy left. <laughs> don't cut, sorry. I doubt it wasn't meant as a pun. <laughs> Yeah, even sitting at idle, they're going to burn a fair amount of fuel, aren't they? Trying to be Bill coming. Kevin Mottershaw, take a spotting over at Melbourne Gym. I don't know if their tank is going out of Melbourne or Captain Bob, main engines. Rachel Van Zeller, two US Hercs heading towards the Isle of Man. That is more than likely it, I would have thought, Rachel. Good spot. I think you might be right. Between US Air Force and Department of Defense about replacement engines for the F 35. Department of Defense want more expensive option which will improve thrust and fix cooling issues. David Ryan, they want 
see how long it will take to get Um, in a lining of the um, of the exhaust on these jets folks I'm pretty sure it's ceramic to put up with the heat F-15s back, haven't we? We got all the F-15s back. Uh... J Bell. Yeah, those flaps. Um, the elephants, as I think they're known. Um, obviously. Uh, they move because that is the rotate the pitch of the aircraft. Susan knew people loving that. <laughs> Max bank angle. Kevin Jackson, I don't know if we'd see them joining the tanker. They're not going to join the tanker until they're way, way, way away from here. Wayne Dyer, hello and goodbye. TCC Burger Time. Hey folks, welcome to everybody joining us right now. We're at RAF Lake and Heath, if you didn't already figure it out uh, from the title and the description. But a very warm, warm welcome to you. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, that's the first session out of the way, I think. Or should we say the morning session? It's just coming up to midday now. I think they will literally be um, breaking for lunch now. Um, tea and tiffin um, 
Oh, they've been asked to join over Melbourne all of that. Oh, okay, my apologies for that. Um, Kevin. I completely misread that one. Uh, Kevin, they've been asked to join over Melden Hall. Can't hear them. Can you hear them? Oh, look, there's a tanker going out now. Right, that's one of the KCs going out. So, um, what are we going to do then? Are we going to? Uh, there's two of them going out. Uh, James Dayton, loving the show Jerry, this is my first comment, I've been lurking as a subscriber for two years and now as a first class member for two months, James, wonderful to have you here, uh, welcome to the chat as well, don't feel uh, in any way um, uh, uh, shy about coming in and chatting folks. Uh, reach 176 Alex Lovell uh, will be the F-35's tankers. Uh, Sean, uh, note they are heading back to Vermont in the US. Alex Lovell, thank you. Uh, Jay, reach is always the call sign for these tankers going across the pond. Thank you. Yeah. Keep those comments coming, folks. If you're a new member, um, if you are a new member and you've um, uh, either been recently gifted a membership or you've just come in and you've, you've, you've joined up as a member, please make sure that you uh, subscribe to the channel. Very important that you do that, folks, because first of all, you get your notifications, but secondly, um, uh, you're able to chat. Um, you need to be subscribed to the channel. I know it sounds crazy that uh, even as a member, you need to still be subscribed. It sounds crazy, but it is the case. We're trying to make changes on that with YouTube, but for the time being, um, it is the way it is so if you want to chat then you need to subscribe even if you are a member and thank you for your support uh, Kevin Jackson cleared to join the tanker over Marham now Jeroen uh, Vogelar, are you planning to go to Friesian Flag in Holland? I'm guessing that's an air show. Uh, no air shows anymore, Joa, Jeroen. Um, hate to say it, trust me, it, 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 it hurts me to say that I'm not going to be doing any more air shows unless something is specific where they guaranteed do not have... Um, uh, music playing over the displays. Um, it's a bugbear now and it will continue to be so um, for me because I think it's a, a damn disgrace playing music over uh, you know something that um, we the English have adopted from uh, from the Americans it appears and 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 to be honest with you it, it 
it, it, it's it's it, it kind of works in that environment in the US, doesn't it? It kind of works in that environment, and and I, and I don't have any problem with him doing it. But for us here, um, I, I I I I just don't I just can't stand it to be honest with you. It's um, now makes me wonder why it, or or accept and appreciate my mum saying. You playing that awful music again, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> They're just screaming. Well, you know, they're trying to sing. No, they're not. <laughs> uh, Scott Hetherington. Uh, the Vermont countryside is very much like the UK. Mountains and lakes and other nice stuff. Been to Burlington once. A uh, lovely place. Scott Hetherington sounds great. A bit like uh, Northern California, isn't it? Up there in Washington State, up the top there. Oh, you can be a member without subscribing, um, uh, Rab. You're absolutely right, but you can't comment, you can't chat if you're not a subscriber. Mike Sierra, thank you very much indeed. Thanks for the kind words. Ken G, I so agree. Uh, very reason I don't go to air shows anymore. There you go. Not only that, but I mean, it's even worse for the poor folks who are standing on the crowd line because the bloody size of the speakers that they put up down there. If you're unlucky enough to be, and they're, they're, they're sort of like 20 feet apart as well. So it doesn't matter where you go, you never get away from the, the noise. I mean, you talk about needing bleeding air protection for the Ear protection for the for the for the jets. You need bleeding ear protection from the from the speakers and the commentators after and the music that blares out of them half the time. It's terrible, man. Using great big like loud speakers and all that. Kevin Jackson, can you see any alpha jet tails to the left of the taxiway amongst the shelters? Alpha jet tails. Well, I'm not seeing anything over uh, to the left. Um, nothing over there. Uh, left of the taxiway. Could be referring to that left hand side, I guess. I think they're all F-35 installations, those uh, those hangars over there, by the way, folks, I think. Um, but, uh, no. Okay, folks, I think what we're going to do is we're going to take a bit of a break. Now, um, don't go too far. Make sure you turn your notifications on and uh, keep an eye on your phone because if uh, as soon as it comes back I'm gonna fire up again and that might be in five minutes time it might be in 60 minutes time so don't go too far away that's maybe something coming your way very lo loud just gone over Norwich okay um, okay folks uh, we will be back shortly don't go too far and uh, we'll see you in a bit cheers